Okay. We welcome to the first ever virtual meeting of the Northampton Street Presentation Committee. Uh, for the first time and not the last, our October 7th uh, meeting. Um, we are still operating under the open meeting law, which means that anyone, and Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, anyone who would like to participate from the public is able to log in and do so. Uh, do we have anyone from the general public out there, Sarah? Oh, it looks like uh, there there is one person here. So if you want to ask if there's public comment, you can okay. start with that. So the way we begin every meeting is uh, uh, for general public comment. There was someone out there who has a comment to the committee. This is your time to uh, to speak. Is the one general public person interested in saying anything at this point? No? Okay. We will move along following the minutes. I mean, following the, uh, the agenda that we have to the approval of minutes. We have two minutes to approve. Uh, seems like forever ago. But the first one is the November 20th meeting of 2019. Is there a motion to approve that meeting? That, I'm sorry. <laughs> So moved. Thank you, Chris. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Jack. Uh, any discussion on the minutes of the November 20th meeting? I uh, just, I should do my, Perfect. should we, are we just hand raising? I think so. Sarah is our, is our Zoom goddess. So uh, I think hand raising is good. Uh, just, I would just, on the second page at the bottom of these minutes, um, there's an incomplete sentence. Um, it's the very last, um, very last sentence in the paragraph before the motion. So, yeah. I will adjust that. Great. Thank you, Martha, for commenting on that. Any other discussion? November 20th, uh, minutes. Hi, Dan Krasner here. I'll, I would just uh, abstain from the, the minutes vote since uh, uh, these meetings predated my, my term. Right. Thank you, Dan. Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, how do we do the approval, Sarah? Are we raising our hands? Is that what we're doing? So all, all votes via uh, Zoom meetings have to be roll call. So uh, after we get a second and finish with discussion for all of the motions, I will um, call everybody's name and, and just say yes. If you, if, okay. If you will. Are we done with discussion? So moving to approval the minutes of November 20th. Sarah? All right. Brian? Yes. Chris? Yes. Jeff? Yes. All right, and Dan, you indicated that you were abstaining. Uh, Jack? Yes. Martha? Yes. Alan? Well, I think I wasn't on the board then, so I'll abstain. And Julia? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, thank you, Sarah. So the second one is, is there a motion to approve the minutes of the December 4th, 2019 meeting? Yeah, moved. Second that. Thank you. Discussion? Okay, so I'm going to take us through the roll call. Uh, Brian? Yes. Chris? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Uh, Dan indicated he was abstaining. Jess? Yes. Martha? Yes. And Alan is going to abstain from this one also. And Julia? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Cheryl, can you hear me? This is Linda. Okay, thank you, Sarah, for leading us through that. Yes, we can, Linda. Thank you. Okay. I don't have a picture, but I can hear you. Oh, good. good to see you. Hi, Linda. You're Hi. Your voice is very clearly you. Yes. We, you missed the approval of the uh, 
minutes of November 20th and December 4th. And we're now moving on to the chair's report. So, okay. uh, isn't this weird being on Zoom, huh? It's, it's not <laughs> uh, to not see everybody's friendly, wonderful faces. It's been quite some time. So I hope everyone's doing well with the chaos around us with um, Corona and politics and the windstorm and everything else that is out there. So uh, thank you for being here. We have a full committee that sort of speaks to our commitment to our town and to the, to the good work that we did. Um, I'd like to welcome Dan Krasner. Dan is our second along with Chris elected representative. Uh, and while he's technically been on the committee, this is his first uh, his first meeting. So, welcome, Dan. Thank you for joining us. If you have questions as we go along, please don't hesitate to ask us or uh, or Sarah, um, and we'll uh, hope that you um, enjoy these meetings as as, as much as we do. Uh, Thank you. The uh, Speaking of, of people's schedules, Jeff and Julia, you may notice that your terms theoretically expired this last summer. Uh, however, Sarah is hard at work making sure that you're not expired from the committee, but that you're back on. And the uh, word on the street is that both of you want to be back on. So we're happy that that's, that you're not, uh, not giving you a chance to comment on that. We're just happy to have you. Have you there? So thank you, and thank you, Sarah, for for moving that along. Um, one thing I'd like to reflect on just very quickly is uh, the whole issue with the coronavirus and the work that we do. It's really important, I think, to know uh, if, if there is such a silver lining in the coronavirus. I'm not sure there is, but if there is, is that a lot of people are getting outside and taking advantage. Uh, wonderful opportunities we have in town to do outdoor activities. Uh, and I think it's really important to recognize the, the, the good work that our, our city does and the good work that we do in making open space preservation a priority and getting more land out there for the public uh, to recreate in or to use or to walk or to contemplate this crazy world. And never has it been more important than right now. And to have that open space available, I think, is, is and, and recreational opportunities is really wonderful. So thank to all of you and all of the good people in our city who make that happen. That we can have so much valuable open space to try to weather the the craziness of the, of, of the time. Um, I want to make sure everybody has seen the uh, review schedule. Our next meeting will be on the 21st. Again, a virtual meeting where we'll be meeting with applicants. November 4th is the public comment session. November 4th, as you know, is the Wednesday after Tuesday the 3rd. So some of us may be a little frazzled, uh, but we can discuss whether we want to keep that. Uh, who knows what will be happening on Wednesday the 4th, but hopefully we'll have uh, We'll still, still be here. Uh, November 18th and or December 2nd is when we're completing council orders uh, with conditions. So that's two meetings in October and two meetings in November and then perhaps one in December. So that's a total of five meetings to get us through this, this process. Uh, we have, as I hope all of you have looked at, seven grants for this fall's consideration. They total, according to my, uh, $383,600 if a land grant was to come through $458,000 without the land grant. Uh, so uh, it's quite a bit of, uh, quite a few dollars in, uh, in the kitty there. Uh, but the good news is that um, we're looking financially strong. I think we're going to move up an agenda item uh, uh, before we discuss the small grant application. 
and with a financial update up so Sarah can sort of walk us through a sheet that she sent us. Um, Sarah, do you want to do a little financial there? Sure. Uh, so I am working on the, the more detailed financial report that has all of the information about the projects and expenditures to, to date. Um, I'm just waiting for the year end closeout from the auditors to be able to do that, but I'll get that to prior to the next meeting. But I did send out the, um, the sort of ex explained council transfer order that was passed at the, at the last council meeting. So this sets aside the 10% into the reserve accounts that we are required to either set aside or spend each fiscal year as well as the, the debt service obligations and the administrative transfer. Um, so the, the bottom line after all of that um, for funding available for the year was about $1,035,000. Um, and that, that includes an initial estimate of a 17% stat, state match. We may actually get a little more depending on the final registry of deeds receipts numbers. Um, all those, although those were initially estimated to be really down because of the, the COVID um, property transfers actually were much greater than anticipated. So it's likely that we'll see some additional funding. So a million, 35,000 is available to us. Correct. And that includes the numbers that are put into the reserve accounts for 80,000 in each of the three uh, uh, open space, historic preservation, and affordable housing. Yep. Uh, questions that people have for Sarah about our finances moving forward? Everybody good with that? Of course, the totals of a uh, million thirty-five thousand is for the whole year. That people understand that it's not for just one half of the year. It's for yeah, the whole yeah. year, is that correct? That is correct. Thank you, Jack, for pointing that out. Other questions for Sarah? Boy, Zoom is so weird. You really just can't get a feedback for, for anybody's faces here. So hopefully we're doing okay. Everybody can hear okay? Is that right? I can hear Sarah very clearly, but Brian, you're not so clear. I don't oh. I don't I don't know if you can speak more directly into you have a whatever bit of you're an speaking echo. into. Yeah, you have a bit of an echo, Brian. Oh god, a bit of an echo. Okay. I will either shut up or do the best I can to not echo. How about that? Yeah, I, I actually also find it difficult to understand you, Brian. Okay. Um, I'm not quite sure what to do about that other than mute myself or talk about. <laughs> It's better since you came on your, with video. I don't know what you did, but you were kind of pingy before that. It's, video is better? Well, your voice is clearer now. Okay. At least on my end. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'll try to speak a little slower. So we're to the small grant application. As uh, folks know, uh, we have Give my two here. We have the ability to uh, yeah. have the ability to move forward with a grant, and one that has come to our attention uh, from Wayne, which is the Pine Road Trail of uh, Creation. If uh, folks have had an opportunity to get to the new conservation area, it really is striking uh, what has taken place in the last year there at the old golf course. Uh, I, I would just by, by not by hiking, but by driving uh, around, you would never know that it was a golf course. It's really quite exciting. Nature of a vacuum and things move, uh, move pretty quickly. Wayne has asked for $3,000 for materials for trail work there. Uh, let me just read the paragraph in the small grants uh, section of the Community Preservation Plan. Sarah sent us a, a section, but just to remind ourselves, um, 
what it's all about. Small grants will be considered at the initial meeting starting each funding round. The intent is for the application to stand alone. The applicant therefore will not be expected to make a preservation during the meeting, although I see that Wayne is here to help us out if need be. At that meeting, or at this meeting, to the extent practical, the committee will make final recommendations to be forwarded to the city council for its consideration separately from those recommendations traditionally made at the close of the funding round. So we have the opportunity in, at this point with this $3,000 small grant proposal to vote it through, to vote against it, or to kick it down the road and put it back into the general coffers to be considered with other grants. So we have, we do have a choice to, uh, if we don't feel comfortable or confident for whatever reason in moving it forward uh, tonight, moving it into the general, the general funding now. Uh, but as we begin, as all things, uh, is there a motion to approve 3,000 for a uh, small grant for the Pine Grove Trail creation. Move that. I move the 3,000 for the small grant. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay, thank you. Uh, discussion? So how do I put my hand up? Uh, you just start talking. All right, Chris. All right, so this is Chris. Um, I'm in support of the motion and, and the small grant, but um, uh, something that occurred to me as I was looking at this, um, my expectation is we're going to, we're going to be hearing from uh, the city probably on several occasions regarding um, support for various projects that go on at this, at this, uh, you know, at this site. And um, I was curious as to whether, and I didn't realize Wayne was here. I can't see that, but um, if, if either Wayne or Sarah um, can speak to, and maybe this isn't the time, but can speak to uh, my question is, you know, uh, what sort of um, sort of, is there any sort of comprehensive or, or I wouldn't say long-term, but middle-term thinking about uh, what types of things uh, you foresee us being asked to fund uh, it over the next couple of cycles. Um, so. Oh, hi, Wayne. <laughs> hi. <laughs> so I think it depends, in terms of the timing, it depends a lot on other grants. So yeah. this is the only funding we're going to ask you to do by yourselves you know, where you're paying 100%. We are gonna be looking, so we had a $225,000 state grant that paid for all the work that Brian talked about that we've done already. Um, and then we have about a dozen volunteers of whom probably three or four are core volunteers who've been helping building trails. This is sort of the big gap to getting the trails to be usable for, you know, in the short term. We're going to be looking for a substantial amount of state grants in the future, and many of those are going to have local matches. So as we find, so what we did to bring back the golf course was sort of the low hanging fruit. We took out every single catch basin, every single irrigation head, every single piece of concrete we could find, and and that was there was no CPA. You guys helped CPA helped fund the acquisition, but not the improvements. That right. was all other funding. What we didn't do is some bigger ticket items. There were 10 acres of wetlands that were filled 40 years ago and was perfectly legal. There were probably close to a mile of stream that was channelized. Someday we would like to restore both those things, or bring back the wetlands and take back the channel. That is a very big ticket item. We would never expect CPA to be a major contributor. But if we found grants that had a match, then that's what we'd want to do is come back and, and leverage it. Again, no commitment. I mean, this grant is unrelated, so no commitment from you for any of those things. But, but that's when we expect to come back is if we get other grants. 
Do you have a do you have like a list of a wish list of things that you're going to be applying for that that we can take a look at? Yeah. So we did as part of this project. We did a master plan. Um, That's really what I was getting at. Yeah. Yeah. We can <laughs> definitely share the master plan. I, I have to caution you. So Mass Audubon's our partner in this project, mm -hmm. and Mass Audubon said, "Let's dream big." And yeah. so we asked GZA to say, if money was not constrained, what would it be? So we have a master plan of about half a million dollars of projects. We do not expect that's ever going to happen. Maybe closer to a million dollars of projects. Um, but so, so just so I'm happy to share, but just so you know, we don't expect to do all those things. Got it. Okay. But yeah, we can absolutely share the master plan. It's very good. GZA was our consultant. We're very pleased with it. Um, the biggest ticket item that I'm not convinced we need to do is to take out the dam. There's a gate valve in the dam so we can let all the water out. Taking out the dam is probably more an aesthetic piece than ecological. Yeah. And so that's probably the biggest place where we would not spend on. Right. Great. Thanks. I mean, that's really helpful. Um, it's this is Martha. I'm just I'm curious, Wayne, how the two thousand dollars was calculated. Um, you, know, you mentioned in your follow up, um, the fo your follow up comments that it's to it sounds like it's mostly to buy blocks. Would those actually? Do you have a design for those, and um, what materials are you using, and where the quantities actually calculated, or you, were you kind of going at like a not to exceed amount here? Really not doing not to exceed. I mean, you know, the, the master plan said we could spend, I think it was $40,000 on trails. We don't expect to ever do that. Um, we had a work party, so Tom from my office is our field coordinator. He's done a lot of work and we had a, a work party with I think about a dozen people out there last Saturday. And so about two thirds of the trails are roughed in. Um, we're, but obviously there's been a drought, right? It's been very wet. So we're gonna assess the trails and come up and see how much of what we built needs boardwalk and how much doesn't. We have about a quarter of mile of guardrail along the bike path that we don't want. It makes it difficult to plow snow. So the actual boardwalk to cross wetlands, we're going to be using from that area. There's two things we're looking at. Um, one is areas which are um, grass is growing and it's not wetlands. We want to do something so we don't have to mow it all the time. And it's probably going to be some trap rock gravel because there's a lot of trap rock gravel trails there. So it used to be as a golf course, there were trap rock gravel trails and they would end at each green which was mowed. Because those greens are now growing up, if you look, it's funny, you look like a trap rock gravel trail, then it ends, and a trap rock gravel trail, and then it ends. Um, because it made sense, it was mowed, it was very short grass. So we wanna fill in some of those gaps with trap rock gravel. And then um, most of the areas where we need boardwalks, we're gonna use pressure treated wood, but there's one area right by the stream that it might be too wet, and that's the area we might use aluminum docks. So those are the two things, trap rock gravel and loon docks. We could frankly spend more than a small grant program. What our goal is, when we did this project, people were incredibly supportive, but there were certainly some people who said, hey, I remember walking was a golf course. It was really short grass and I could walk anywhere and you're ruining my walking opportunity. It's our goal to make a one mile loop trail that works in all but the wettest weather. That's what we're trying to get to with this project. It is our long-term goal to get to another half a mile trail and goes to other places. And that's a lot, that's beyond what this budget would be. Um, we, where will there be parking for people who want to access the trails? So we tend not to want to do parking when we don't need to. So there's sort of three answers. We're going to be watching it and see where there's a problem and where there isn't. We have as part of this trail work we did, or not me, but the other people did uh, last weekend or weekend before, we roughed in trails that go to the land we owned already. And that connects to two parking lots. So on Route 66, if you know where the gas pumping station is sort of opposite the ice pond, just next to the jail, 
is a small two or three car parking lot on Route 66, I'm sorry, on Route 10 by where the bike path bridge crosses over is a small three car parking lot. And on Old Wilson Road, there's room for about four or five cars along the road in safe places. So we're watching all of those things. If we see demand, the spot would be when you go on Old Wilson Road, there's sort of a blind curve. And just to the left, there's a gravel trail that comes in. There's been a loader parked there for the last three months. Um, that's been the access we've used for machinery. Once the construction's done, there's a spot there. We could build two or three parking spots there. Again, we're not going to do that until we, we know for sure there's a demand for doing it. We had, during the worst of COVID, when the state hospital was closed, the area was overrun with people because they were desperately walking their dogs there. But once the state hospital reopened, we seemed to be back at a steady state. Heavily used, but not so much. So, um, Again, I think we'll watch it for a year and see what happens. We're always looking for, you know, the desire lines is the term we do as proof that people want to go there. Thank you. Other questions for Wayne or Suma? Are we ready to vote on this? Yep. Yeah? Everybody's good with that? Yes. Okay, so motion is to approve three thousand dollars uh, for the Black Road Trail creation. Uh, Sarah, you want to take us through a roll call? Absolutely. Uh, Brian. Yes. Chris. Aye. Jeff. Yes. Dan. Yes. Jack. Yes. Martha. Yes. Alan. Yes. Julia. And Linda? I'd like to be original, but I'll say yes, too. <laughs> OK. All right, so that is unanimous. So I will have a draft council order ready for review at the next um, meeting. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Wayne. And what a wonderful piece of property. A delightful new acquisition. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for all your help buying it. Yeah. It's Hello? Uh, Brian, you're muted, Brian. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving right along, uh, we have a request for an expedited review of the water-based recreation assessment proposal. Uh, once again, that we has uh, put forward. Uh, so what our intent uh, tonight is to um, discuss whether or not to accept this as an expedited review. And again, if you read the section that Sarah sent out from the Community Preservation Plan regarding expedited review, it is up to us to determine whether this warrants moving this request out of the traditional cycle and into a quick process. And there are five questions that we want to ask. One is, when is the CPC commitment needed and why? Number two, when is disbursement needed and why? Number three, what is the impact on the project if, in fact, if the project of the deadlines for CPC commitment and disbursement not being met? So what happens if we don't expedite the, the uh, the, the project. Number four, why is this important to the preservation? And number five, what are the negative effects if we don't review this project on in, in an expedited basis? So those are what we need to ascertain uh, tonight. Uh, does it meet the requirements of looking at it for an expedited review? If it does, we could move it forward uh, tonight. We don't have to. We can set up a schedule where we can move it forward the next meeting. Uh, and again, we have the option of putting it into the kitty along with all of the other six projects that we have since we've done one project already. 
So the discussion that we need to have is um, should this be looked upon in an expedited way and move forward quicker than our other proposals? Is everybody clear about that? Yes. Okay. Yes. So um, would it be helpful to have Wayne or Sarah speak to why this has come forward as an expedited request? Yes, I've seen some ads. Sure. Just so I set the stage quickly. I know I'm not lobbying for the, the merits, but just to so understand where, where we're going. So there are four informal swimming areas on the Mill River. Um, one on city property, three on largely private property, and there's one informal swimming area on the Connecticut River. Um, all of those were overwhelmed this year with use. Um, that was probably some combination of direct results of COVID. People couldn't do other things. Other places charging more, including the city, frankly, because we could only have half the number of people swim at Musanti Beach. We charge more because it has to be self-supporting. Um, and I think, frankly, because the word got out. So there was very heavy use at all five areas several of them, three of the five became issues of major neighborhood contention, one in Leeds most dramatically um, in terms of sort, of sort of very different views in the neighborhood, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing and how we should manage it. My department is not that involved other than picking up some trash in that day-to-day -day management. So for the next year or two, I have very little to do with it. You know, it's police and fire and, and other people. But my department is charged with long-term solutions. So um, both for planning for conservation land and for recreation, we support them in terms of how do we solve this problem for the long term? Because even after COVID, it's not gonna go away. There's more demand forever for swimming opportunities. So we're looking at these five areas. Two, uh, three in particular, we're thinking maybe there's some minor improvements to solve some of the problems to require some major, potentially have major improvements. Those two are at Maine's Field and at Connecticut River Greenway. They have the greatest opportunity for large scale recreation. Um, the, the reason for the timing, and this may be an impossible standard, so it may, I, I wanna be clear that even if you approve us going forward, we may not be able to meet the deadline we're trying to do, but the, we're looking at potentially being able to apply for a either land and water conservation grant, which would be due in May-ish, or the dates haven't been announced yet, or a park grant application, which would be due in July, and could we move far, fast enough to go forward? The, if we couldn't get funded to the normal round, the answer is we definitely could not make those rounds. But again, to be honest, even if you let us go forward, could we go far enough to meet the rounds? That's not certain. We would be hiring a landscape architect and in, in engineering firm. The landscape architect to sort of more help with the visioning side. The engineer did basically get us to 10% design. That's sort of the magic number for a park grant. We don't need to have a full design, which would take longer, but we need to figure out, you know, are we, do we want to build a bathroom? If, the ba if we're building a bathroom at Connecticut River Greenway, would it be composting because there's no water there? It was a mains field. Is there a management choice? So a lot of things are soft decisions. You know, the bathroom at mains field, for example, is only open when there's a field activity. So even though there's a bathroom there, it's closed most often. So we need to sort of build some consensus in the vision of what we're trying to do, some deciding of what it would look like, and then some engineering for long for grants. So it's time critical for the for the park grant, again, I don't want to mislead you. I don't can't guarantee we could actually get that far by the June, July deadline. But we hope we could, because you know, because the issue is we apply in 2021. We hear December of 2021. We spend 2022 doing design. We spend 2023 doing construction. So the most optimistic scenario for a long-term solution is 2023. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yeah. 
Wait, so Wayne, could you clarify? It, it, it's it sound. Uh, um, I guess what I'm still confused about is why it has to be, why the expedited as opposed to our regular review. Now it sounds like whether it's expedited or regular, you're still on the same timeline. Am I missing that? I no. If it if, if it's expedited, I mean, if you got, if you voted tonight to consider it, we would start working on the scope of services. We have a public meeting scheduled. I think next week. I can't remember exactly when with the community and basically say, what, what are the questions? I mean, I, you know, I can't even solve the answers till we ask people what the questions are. Um, but no, we would be aiming, if we could move fast enough, we might be able to um, do design through the winter and spring and be able to apply in 2021. If we didn't know till January, the normal round, we definitely couldn't make that round. Wayne, what were the other two areas that were uh, so hotly contested? So the, the, the biggest one is the Orange Dam in Leeds. Um, right. And, and that's been a battle, frankly, almost about what's the definition of institutional racism. Um, so it's been an interesting battle. <laughs> right. Other, I read all those, the lo all those letters to the editor. Yeah. <laughs> the other two, um, one is by what I call the Nonduck Mills Dam. I'm not sure its formal name. It's the dam just south of Pine Street. People swim yep. both above the dam and below. Cross Street, Pine Street actually has not been controversial, at least I haven't heard that. Cross Street has been the incredibly controversial issue. Um, and then Cook Dam in Leeds, both below by the Country Club and above by Conservation Land. Mm -hmm. Cook Dam's been, I mean, kids have been swimming there for 30 years, I've been in Northampton. Um, right. So it's not new, but it's certainly picked up you know, the number of people swimming there and the trash left behind. I guess part of what I was trying to figure out was uh, there certainly was a lot of, of, of heat around this issue, but it looked to me from your presentation that this really doesn't have the potential to address those hotly contested areas. The, the two areas that have some potential for major improvements are already heavily used and it will make them nicer, but I don't see how it will address the neighborhood issues. Cause I don't think it's gonna siphon, tell me if I'm wrong. So it, so it didn't seem clear to me that it was gonna siphon off people to the improved areas and relieve the burden on, on these contested areas. So we hope it does. So that's the only part of the theory is, are there places we could do that are hardened enough to, to be attractive? I mean, I'll, you know, we did a survey, we hired someone to do a survey of, of users. And this is a one day survey, you know, interviewing 25 users. So I, I, I understand it's a tiny sample size, but a majority of them were not Northampton residents. Um, and so moving, if people are uh, coming by car anyway, moving it to a different place, in that case, particularly Connecticut River, could siphon off users. Um, Connecticut mm -hmm. River, because of a big ice storm three years ago, an enormous sandbar formed. So from when the canal was built 140 years ago till three years ago, it was not a good swimming area. It's now, frankly, one of the best swimming areas in the city. Um, so, so part of the theory is, yes, siphoning it off. Part of the theory about questions, and this is as much political as planning, but it's part of the piece is, what are we willing to do? So this is, so the city's been reluctant to put trash barrels out because except for downtown, we don't have trash barrels. And if we put them somewhere, why don't we put them somewhere else? And as long as we have a carry in, carry out policy, most people, even the worst these uses of carrying out their trash, if we leave a trash receptacle, no one's gonna carry out their trash. But that needs to be a conversation, both in terms of funding and other things. The issues we hear in Leeds are that we can partially address are a huge amount of trash and trash receptacles could address that. Although, as I say, it would be a large volume of trash. So that's one potential improvement, a little bit capital, mostly maintenance. The other is there is a large owner and known parcel. So we own a piece of conservation land that gets some use, but not particularly abuse. There's the chart pack property and they're managing it. And there's an owner and known property that literally we don't know who owns it. Conservation Commission in 1974 um, went to council and got permission to file a deed. And the, and the plan was to take it by adverse possession 30 years later, but somehow after the council approval, they never recorded that deed. So this has been an issue for a long time. 
we have a title search going on right now by Bob Spencer, our title abstractor. So if we had more land, we would pretend, again, if the city is willing to accept it, we might have some management capabilities. You know, are we fine with music, but we want to have sound limits? Um, again, we have no consensus what we even want to do, but there's some management things we could do. Mm -hmm. Wayne, I have a question. Um, what, what's the rationale for the city being involved with planning for the use of private property? Well, chart, so there's a few answers. Um, in Leeds, again, the, the largest piece, about half the property is chart pack, part half is owner unknown. So the question is, would we want to acquire that? Um, the chart pack property before this all happened, we approached chart pack and said, would you give us the land? Chart pack said, only if you took the dam. And we said, no way we're taking the dam. That's a, you know, a limitless liability. Um, I suspect if we had that same, um ask today they would happily get get rid of it because it's such a liability but I, I suspect at the same time we wouldn't take it without going through this process so the question in leads is do we want to own this at cook dam we own some of the property so just north of the dam there's an old sub substation location that's owned by national grid and north of that is a portion of roberts hill um conservation area um, the rest is private, but we still get involved with some management pieces. Um, and then we own nothing at Nonatuck. Same thing. We had some conversation years ago with the since deceased owner of Nonatuck Mills, and he was interested in donating some of his land to us. So the question is, would we want to own that property? Like it or not, we're involved. The police are doing what enforcement there is. Fire department's doing fire enforcement. So it's not necessarily my department, it's not necessarily recreation, but somewhere or other the city's gonna involve with all these uses. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of questions about the, um, the content. Um, it would be helpful if we had a scope of work for what these folks are gonna be, the consultants would be doing, like what kind of a public participation process are, are you anticipating? Um, you know, it, it's obviously COVID makes it more complicated to bring large groups of people for forums and that kind of thing. Although, you know, Zoom is an accessible medium, but um, it, it would be helpful just to know how that's going to get laid out, who, what the outreach is going to be like, how, what means are going to be used to do it, um, you know, what you're expecting as results, and. And then also, I'd just be curious to just know how the $65,000 budget was arrived at, just given that we're being asked to support the entire project. So the um, community, well, I guess, really good questions. I don't really have a good answer yet. So we didn't want to commit in a scope until we did this community meeting, because we're trying to figure out what is it, again, what are the questions that people want answered? So we have that meeting. I don't have it in front of me, but come up in the next week or two. Um, and so we didn't want to do a scope until then. We did an outreach to two landscape architects um, and asked them what would their cost be um, for sort of the concept wrong, the consensus, the figuring out what, you know, basically trying to find an approach for that, the process. Um, and frankly, we then double that to then bring an engineer to take us to 10% design. So half that budget is a real budget based on what the two landscape architects gave me as estimates. The other half is literally doubling it, frankly, from my experience in other projects. So that's a realistic reflection of what the engineer's fee would be for actually doing design. But it's not a very good number, I know that. So is there no money in here for engagement at all? So we would be doing engagement, so the city would take the lead in doing engagement um, and we would bring, there's money in there for the landscape architect and engineering firm to be represented in the community, but not seeking out people. Um, so we would be doing that. So, so the stakeholder groups, so there's a few pieces I know we want. We would certainly do community meetings. The first one, as I say, is coming up uh, and we're gonna build lists for that. Um, and, and, you know, we're, we're, and that's gonna just be a normal Zoom piece. We're also gonna do additional stakeholder interviews. So we did that, or as I said, we did it during the summer when people were out there 
we did interviews were follow up of people we know were using it for frequent users. Um, we know some, we know both sort of some of the users who we interviewed. We know some of the people who are objecting most vehemently, both in Leeds um, and at Nonotuck Mill. And so we do stakeholder interviews for them. Um, so, we, so we have sort of a general process for what the outreach would be. And we have separate money for that. It's not, you know, just doing stakeholder, and both some of the staff, but doing stakeholder interviews is not especially expensive and doing community meetings. And what about reaching out to non-traditional populations, such as people who come from outside the community? Is that part of what you would do? Is that thought of is important? So we would. So in terms of non-traditional populations who are from the community, absolutely. You know, certainly, people were a lot of the population. It leads was the Leeds apartments um, in Florence and Nonotuck. It was um, uh, Florence Heights. So we certainly intended to reach out to those populations. We haven't really talked about um, whether we're deliberately trying to reach out to other populations outside of Northampton. I, I think our perspective so far, again, this is a community meeting, is the reality is people are going to come here and we have to be ready for it, but we're not trying to make it, we're not trying to attract people here and therefore we don't feel like we need to reach out. We're trying to serve Northampton residents' needs. The questions we do want to ask, though, cover some of those things, are things that are seemingly unrelated. We know that the Housing Authority, for example, does not allow grilling on Housing Authority property. We suspected, although we did not find that that much when we did the stakeholder interviews, we suspected when we asked people, why did you come, we would hear people say, because I couldn't grill in my backyard, therefore I had to come somewhere else. People were grilling in Leeds in particular. That did not show up in our, in our limited pool of stakeholder interviews, but that's the kind of thing we want to do, ask of Northampton residents. So half your question is yes, non-traditional players in Northampton we want to get. We haven't had any plans to do that outside of Northampton. Uh, Wayne, you said that um, the goal would be to arrive at, at 10% design plans, but then the proposal says 25%. Is it or 25? The, the grant doesn't actually have a number. You have to show a credible argument that you can finish the rest of the plan within a year. So they give us a grant in November, December of 2021. And by June of 2020, it's not always clear because the grants have changed. They sometimes make you do the design by June of 2022 and sometimes by June of 2023. So we need to have a credible argument that we're pretty far along in design and we're doing the technical things, but not the visionary things. Um, and so I, in the highway world, they've changed the numbers. So it used to be 25% was really 25% along the line. And the highway world, 25% now is virtually done except the bricks and mortar side. In other stuff, we use 10% as the concept wrong, where you know the concept and the rest is getting more serious. So it's not necessarily a percentage of budget, but we're far enough along, we know what we'd be doing. We know if we're doing a bathroom, we know if the bathroom's gonna be composting toilet, we know what we're doing where, but not necessarily the engineering behind this. Thank you. Uh, other questions for me, sir? I, I have another question, if I may. I'm I'm struggling with the um, how do we distinguish this project um, from other projects that are try also trying to meet a, a deadline for application and will uh, of necessity you know, be put off if they can't, uh, if they can't meet that deadline. I mean, that happens all the time in the funding world. There are always deadlines and uh, trying to mesh the, the CPC schedule with those deadlines is, is, is not, is not particularly possible. Um, so how do you make the argument that this is so special that um, we have to say yes to you and no to others? Yeah, that's, that's fair. I guess, the only answer I could give is sort of my call log or the mayor's call log or any city council's call log. There's a sense of urgency about swimming out there now. 
that's pretty intense out there. And there's a stress in the community that wasn't there before. Um, and so that's, that's why we're trying to expedite it. I don't disagree and, on everything is going on. And, and how, much, how much was this accelerated by COVID? I mean, people, kids couldn't, couldn't do summer camp for the most part. Uh, parents were going crazy trying to keep their kids busy and themselves busy, et cetera, et cetera. So it really was a different, really was a different year. Um, it was also very hot this summer, if you remember. Yes. It long, long stretches of very hot weather and no rain. Yes. I, I don't know the answer. It's a really good question. We don't know. And if there's not COVID next year, I guess we won't really know till then. I, I will say that Leeds in particular, the Orange Dam, has gotten progressively worse over the last three years. And Leeds would certainly tell you last year was pretty bad too. Not as bad as this year, but bad. The other thing is there is a social network component that these areas have been discovered. Um, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. The Seneca River, for example, is an amazing resource. And it was not that heavily used. I mean, it was heavily used and the rowers picked up a lot of trash. But considering we have a big parking lot and a wonderful area to swim, it had less use than leads. So part of my feeling is once discovered, you can never put the genie back in the bottle again. <laughs> yep, there's probably some truth to that. Other questions? So, when, once again, considering this to be as an expedited uh, proposal, the impact on having it funded through the traditional round is not very until from city council till January, would be that the consultant could not be hired, the engineer could not be hired, the initial plans could not be presented, it would lose out on these large grants that would be required to move the project forward. Is that correct? Right, right. With, you know, the normal cycle, we definitely could not apply in 2021 for the bigger grant. Again, can't guarantee we could even apply with the cycle, but that's what we're aiming for, we're aiming it being able to move fast enough that we could apply a year earlier. Okay. And as an expedite, asking that it be expedited, does that mean, uh, can you wait two weeks? Do you, would you want it now? What? You know, okay. Waiting two weeks is fine because, you know, I my next step is this community meeting and then doing um, a scope of services and then going to bid. You know, if you say you don't want to do this, I don't want to spend the effort, my effort putting together a scope and engineers and landscape architects effort responding to a quote. But if there's a chance that you're going to do it, then I'm going to do that so we can get somebody on board as quickly as possible. Okay. So you would like it tonight or two weeks from now? And would you be able to if we were to, to wait a bit, would you be able to bring us some information about what you learn at the community meeting? I, I, it seems like that could be really helpful for us. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and I'd also like to see more of a, just a detailed breakdown of the community engagement. Um, okay. That would be helpful as well. All right, definitely. You don't know when that, meet, that public meeting is? Uh, let me I just grab my calendar, sorry. Um, and, and, and actually, when you do that, can you just clarify the, the, how that public meeting, what, what's the topic on that public meeting? Because I, I didn't understand that that public meeting was about all of the swimming areas and a plan for all of the swimming areas. I thought it was only about one particular. So no, we hopefully, so it, it's first, the date is um, Monday, October 19th. Um, we sent out... I think, did we send you the sort of one page, I think we sent you the one page or two page preliminary assessment that we did of areas. Yes. Um, the invite I sent out was just the thing about these five areas. I didn't send the ones that we were rejecting or the ones that were already swimming area, but that's what went out with that, so. And so, so um, Monday, October 19th at seven o'clock, it's a, again, a Zoom meeting. Um, and if anyone's interested, we could certainly send you a link for that. And we meet the, we would meet again on the 21st. So in a couple of days to uh, give some summary of us and would be able to present that at a 21st meeting. Yes, absolutely. 
Other questions for Wayne? So what I'm hearing is that it makes sense not to vote tonight whether to expedite this or not, but to have that discussion as part of our meeting on the 21st, given that Wayne will have had the 19th meeting and be able to report back to us as to the results of that and perhaps a little additional um, material that Martha requested as well. Uh, and perhaps as we reflect on this in the next few days, if we have any additional questions, we can pass those to the Sarah and then onto you, Wayne, that would be okay. Yes? Yeah, absolutely. Does that make sense then? So let's see. So on the, on the 21st, that's the date that we are meeting with uh, applicants, but we will simply put that down on our list as business to attend to, whether to move that project forward in an expedited basis or not. Are we good on that? Yes? That yes. Right. yes. Good. Okay, thank you so much, Wayne. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Wayne. Thanks, Wayne. Yeah. yeah, thanks very much. Moving right along to uh, scheduling site visits, Sarah and I talked about uh, looking at the six proposals that we have now in front of us. Uh, two, the historic preservation ones, the Academy of Music and the Smith Charity. Uh, charities building certainly lend themselves to site visits. How we would do that in the age of social distancing, we have to figure out. We've been number of us have been to the academy a number of times to look at this proposal. Uh, Sarah suggested that the charities might be one we want to look at. There's a lot of outdoor work that we could access from the street. And then perhaps that's on that first floor uh, work as well. Uh, in terms of the land acquisition project, the Rocky Hill Greenway, uh, start, correct me if I'm wrong, but you suggested you could give folks a trail map and then those of us able to could walk that ourselves, um, that perhaps we wouldn't need you, but we could request that as well. Sure. Yeah. So if, if people are interested in, in going out to the open space acquisition, I could give you directions. It's, it's easy to get to. It's a nice walk, uh, providing the, the weather holds up. Um, I'm sure the Academy of Music would be happy to give tours to anyone who, who hasn't been there to look at the specific projects. They are still staffed, um, but it's a little bit bare bones at the moment. But if anyone shoots me an email, I could certainly put you in touch with them. And I was able to get a tour of the Smith Charities building and it's really unique and interesting and, and maybe worth visiting for people who are interested. It is in no way accessible. Um, it, it has a lot of stairs. It's, it's not a re really friendly place to be, um, but, it, but it's worth visiting for all of the sort of quirks that are in there. There's a cool safe that sort of limits um, development opportunities. But a lot of the work is also exterior to the building. So although you may have gone by previously and not really looked at it, if you examine the sides, you can see, sort of see some of the work that they're proposing. I'm wondering sure. if these places where people are still working, like you said, the academy, there's still someone there, if actually what they might be willing to do is to submit to us video tours. That's certainly safe right now in COVID and maybe we could we could view some video tours, video tour of Smith Charities, video tour of what's it called, the Academy of Music, and possibly even just some quick video tours of some of the other spaces. We would all then have access to it as That's opposed a great to some idea, people going Julia. Yeah. That's a great idea, Julia. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm sure the applicants would be happy to. Yeah, it just has to be abolished. Then the academy doesn't need to bring in bands to accompany their tour, but um, that's great. Yeah. Uh, I mean, other requests: the Collins Town Commission now the uh, the uh, affordable housing. That's not, a, uh, not something either. So we're really just looking at uh, three or two video tours. And then someone was but walk the Rocky Hill Greenway. 
There's only one in the commentary while well, they like that, too. Sarah. So, um, do we need to, to sh should we hold off on this? Do we want to uh, uh, go with it? Julia's suggestion and see if they'll provide us with a, with a um, tour. Comments? Where did you get that one on the driveway? Uh, the planting stairs. There should be another one there. Oh, here. Here. Any comments on video tours as opposed to real tours? Yeah. Never seen this again. Yeah, well, I need it tomorrow, so. No idea. Um, and, and actually, now that I've suggested that, I might also suggest that we give them some kind of a clear time limit. Like, we don't want 20-minute tours, you know, three-minute right. video tours. Show us what's important. I love you. Get us, get us to the points that, we, that are most important for us to see. Put it up as an unlisted link on YouTube. We'll all go in and watch them. That sounds, to me, that sounds like a really good idea. Are we in agreement with that? In the age of social distancing, can't get much yeah. We can also go to the outside of the buildings and look as well. Chris? I was just going to say, if we can encourage them to um, keep the videos to a manageable length and not, uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> you weren't paying attention. <laughs> you were distracted. I was. I was. My wife, my wife is asking me where the flashlights were, so I'm, you know. We heard. <laughs> sorry. I thought I was being <laughs> muted. Sorry. <laughs> We do love we do love your lighting though, Chris. Yeah, we know you love your wife too. That's good. I got this. I got this. I got this. I got this. Yeah. <laughs> really. Okay, so are we good on site visits? We're doing virtual tours, and then if we want to go, can we get that Smith Jerry, sir? Can we get into the side of the building? And is there a space to be able to see that? You know how it's I mean, to the other. If, if you walk around the back, you can get to it from the alley. Okay. Um, so there's a gate on the main street side, but if you walk, um, to, it's an alley, I, it must have a name, I can't think of the name of it, but it, if you walk around the sort of the back of Silverscape and go around, then you can walk down that alley and there's parking and, and you can directly yeah, access yeah, that. Okay, good, good, good. Sarah, um, for the Wilbur property, um, is the, would the entrance to that be um, off of Cook Avenue, yeah, at the old um, Moose Lodge. Is that yeah. where you would recommend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You can get to, uh, and I'll send everybody a trail map for that one. You can get to it either through, either from there or through mm -hmm. the cemetery. Okay. Can you also access it through Lathrop, right? It looks to me like we could just yes. right, that back in the yeah, way. Yeah, you can't really, you can't get to it from Lathrop because it, yeah. it abuts the back of the houses, but it, um, oh, okay. it does so touch the, the Lathrop Conservation property. Yeah. And, and the trails. Uh, Sarah, I actually walked that two days ago, and I noticed that that um, trail out to the Beaver Dam has a little pink flag right at the entrance to it. So if people are walking down Boggy Meadow Road, you'll see a little pink flag, and you can take you out to the Beaver Dam, which is pretty cool. Yes. Excellent. Anything else on uh, site visits? So when we come back in uh, two weeks, we will be hearing from the applicants for the six proposals that we are considering. And uh, does everyone think that that's, that should be a manageable amount? I know we talked about this um, after the, the last round where we had a, a bunch of applicants and, and it seemed to work well. We could potentially break it up into two meetings if it's too much. Um, but it, you know, if, even if everybody gets 15 minutes, it shouldn't be too bad. Well, particularly since we have a request for an expedited review and don't know how that one is going to turn out, I'd like to try to get through all of them as quickly as possible. So 15 minutes would be an hour and a half, correct? And we can hang in there for that length of time. Are people good with that? Do we all six of the projects on the 21st? Yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm in support of that. Okay. 
and then knowing that we will also have a discussion as to whether to move forward the um, swimming, the water regulatory uh, proposal. Great. Uh, any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? Does anybody know anything about the electricity situation in Northampton since I'm sitting in the dark talking to you all? You're kidding. Um, when I looked it up before, 40% of the city had no power. So, yeah. Linda, are you at right. home? Linda, I'm at home. Oh my gosh, because we have power and I'm not that far from you. I'm right with you, yeah. Linda, in Florence. I have no power. From Massachusetts, yeah. we have no power either, Martha. That's just odd. Yeah. I do up at this at the at the Elm Street end because I saw the lights on in some of my neighbors' houses, but it must be, I don't know, it's too bad. Sure yeah, was I know, I'm, I'm definitely in the dark. I'm pretty clear on that. <laughs> well, I've been on hold with National Grid for an hour and 15 minutes now. Oh. What better way to spend your time on hold than with us now? <laughs> uh, well, thank you, Jeff and Linda, for joining us in the dark. And hopefully the power will be there. I always remember the first virtual meeting. <laughs> <laughs> The uh, sad news is you may not be able to watch the debate at nine o'clock. Although yeah. it was so sad that I watched the debate the last one, so maybe that's a blessing in disguise. Anyway, any other business right. <laughs> for seeing when the agenda was published? Uh, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, Dan, our first meeting, okay? Yes? Figure out what's going on. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Good. We'll see you again in two weeks. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, everybody. Good night, all. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Do you need a motion to adjourn? Is there a motion to adjourn? Uh, so moved. Second. 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 Okay, got it. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.